This show currently is going to be uh, two hours and it's going to be every alternating Saturday. So every two weeks, every Saturday at 6 p.m. East, uh, 6 p.m. Central Time. So 6 p.m. Central Time. And wow. So I had uh, previously done another radio program in the past with a few episodes called the vegan sandwich at the time and then eventually in 2017 i created with a friend uh those crazy vegans.net and right now we are looking for someone to take the website over so if you're interested do contact us if you want to run the website own it Basically, it is a vegan information website and online community. So, thosecrazyvegans.net. Yes, this is Michael Anfield, and thank you so much for joining me. So, every two weeks, um, hopefully get in a guest for the show. So, if you want to be featured guests on the show, don't hesitate to contact me or contact vbnradio.com or contact me at weareinterconnected.com. So there's a lot of news happening uh, in the world today. Uh, you know, all the viruses and the sickness and the disease, all the environmental devastation happening all over the world. And we're going to be talking about this. And even though this is a radio show about positivity, how to be vegan, and just anything about veganism, about animal agriculture, about our world issues that we're facing, it's all going to be here on creating a beautiful world. And a lot of these ideas that I'm speaking to you about today are coming from the ideas and the issues that I present through my books, as well as, uh, you know, gifted and inspirational guest speakers that we're going to have on each week. So if you want to be featured here, if you're a vegan or not, come voice your opinion. We're here. We're taking all sorts of opinions and we're going to also educate not only on a why it's so important to be vegan and the, really the deeper meaning of what veganism truly is when Donald Watson coined it in 1944. Yes. So exciting news that uh, first thing is this is a new radio show. So it's in kind of... I should say, a testing uh, phase right now. And hopefully everybody can hear me. So thank you so much for joining me. If you have any questions or anything you want to add, please do send me a message through Messenger or Facebook. Uh, Michael Landfield, just search me and you can send me a message. If not, uh, you can always email info at weareinterconnected.com. Send in your questions and I will definitely get to them uh, as well. Maybe um, maybe right away or maybe for the next show. But uh, yeah, great. Okay, let's see uh, what's happening here. One moment. Yes, okay. So, so other news right now before we get to the devastating uh, effects that's uh, and all the problems that we're facing as humanity throughout the world and what we can actually do to be a, a guardian for this earth, to be a steward for the planet, steward for the animals and for each other. So tomorrow, it was announced a few days ago by Supreme Master Ching Hai that there's going to be a vegan world prayer. Yes, 
it will commence tomorrow so february sunday february 9 hong kong time 9 p.m so it's going to be 9 p.m hong kong that is uh 6 30 um, no sorry 9 p.m is 6 a.m the same day central time or 7 eastern time 2 p.m uh paris time so check out that and i'm going to be live tomorrow for vegan world prayer so that's going to be exciting we're going to be praying for a vegan world we're going to be praying for all the animals to be free praying for all the humans to be free from enslavement so that's going to happen Again, 6 a.m. I believe it's 6 a.m. It's uh, 9 p.m. Hong Kong time. And that is tomorrow. It's um, Sunday, February 9th. So it's going to be a worldwide event. I think it's also going to be live on... Supreme Master TV, so check that out as well. But uh, you can definitely check out my YouTube channel. It will go live tomorrow. So that is exciting. That is so exciting. Another thing is that I'm also going to be live on another radio broadcast, which you'll find the details on my website in the events section we are interconnected.com so you're going to be able to find it there it's happening february 20th and all the details will be there a few days before maybe a week before they have to send me the the details and the link and everything for me to sign sign on but basically i will be promoting veganism to at least 30 to 50,000 people because that's how many listeners there are and it's going to be an interview through a huge uh, media network called UI Media Network and they have affiliations with uh, big companies and it's going to be they have a potential actually to reach about 3 million people so this is excellent sharing the vegan message to the next level to the masses of people so i think that is really it um oh yeah one more thing before i um i discuss a little bit about my life and my journey and just so you guys can get to know me that's basically why i'm here and this is the first ever show for creating a beautiful world on vbnradio.com so recently uh, actually last year end of the year I got this idea from a friend to host um, or to push myself to create physically create one second physically create the vegan community that I always wanted to create but I just didn't know how to go by doing it because of course who has fifty thousand or hundred thousand dollars or whatever money to buy land to create a community and so I've always wanted to create this well since 2014 anyways I've wanted to create a vegan community I know that community is one of the ways we actually even this this is kind of a like a community and so community is one way that we can actually come together as vegans to create and to share veganism to the world and to other all all, all the people on this earth and and so eventually i decided that okay um and i'm gonna one second 
I did not know where the voice was coming from or who was talking to me. But it asked me a question. So I was meditating and I, and I was looking up at the clouds and it asked me a question. If I profess to love animals and the earth, why am I consuming animal products? It just didn't make any sense. And, but I did not know what is, where this voice was coming from. And at first I felt scared because I just didn't know like, like who is asking me this. If I profess to love animals and the earth, why am I consuming animal products? So I got to thinking, Um, after a few moments of, of hearing this voice, I felt like it felt as if weight was being lifted off my shoulders and it felt like the hair was being, the hair was standing on the back of my neck. Like I had goose, goosebumps. And at that moment, it felt so, I felt so relieved. I felt so at peace. I felt interconnected with all life. I felt as if I was in another creature. And thus I did not want to harm another creature or get anyone like a farmer or slaughterhouse worker to do the harm on my behalf. I want I wanted nothing to do with animal use. And I understood what the purpose of my life was. A little while later, I went back to a photograph that I had of me in a circus when I was younger. And I was sitting next to a bear with a muzzle on his or her face. And I asked myself a question. How on earth could I have supported such barbaric practice? For the first 26 years, I was the one consuming animal products going to zoos, seeing animals and entertainment and for testing and clothing and for pets and all these things that how could I ever have done this for the first 26 years of my life? And right then and there, I knew that my purpose in life was to share the stories of my awakening. And not only that, to share the stories of the non-human animals that are at our mercy. And no matter what, if our voice shakes, uh, or I'm living on the street, or I'm living somewhere without a house, though I believe Earth is our home, I vowed and vow to always speak out when there's injustice. And so I understood not only do I have to stop consuming animal products of any sort, stop seeing animals, non-human animals as property, as things to be used, stop wearing them, stop testing on them, stop anything basically that uses them and stop seeing them as property. But also to share the message with others. Not only are we to live with the least harm and with compassion for all life, but 
to share this message as far and as wide as we possibly can. That is why I decided, yes, I want to be on vbnradio.com. No, I don't have that much experience, but I'll do whatever I can to share this message. Really, it's about domination of other living beings. It's really about creating peace on this earth, true peace and freedom and love and compassion for all life, including our Mother Earth. There is no better time right now to speak out against all the injustice that's happening in the world, around the world today. No, we can't do it tomorrow because tomorrow will never come. We got to do it now and do as much as we can for all the innocent beings that are being enslaved right now. May it be non-human or human. Non-human animals, it's so important to understand that non-human animals are the most vulnerable and most innocent of all the creatures on this earth. We need to understand that there are literally trillions, trillions, every and each year, trillions of animals being slaughtered, being mercilessly killed for our taste, pleasure, for clothing, for entertainment, etc. And we have a choice today to be vegan, if we're not already vegan, and to share the message of veganism with others. It is so important. Why is it so important? Because virtually every one of our problems that we're faced with as humanity, every one of our problems is attributed to the main cause, which is animal agriculture, which is the herding of animals. Herderism, as Dr. Will Tuttle coined, is really about owning other beings, owning animals, non-human animals. And if we are ever to be free as human beings, to live free, live with peace, live with love, with all, we need to stop exploiting non-human animals. There is no other way. We can't fight for human rights if we're still consuming animal products meat, dairy, eggs, flesh of animals, honey, dairy, eggs, what have you, animal clothing. We need to stop seeing animals as property. We need to be vegan. And veganism, all it means is love. Love for all life. We also need to understand not only are we to, it's mandatory that we actually be vegan. If we care about justice, justice for other living beings, there is no other way. We're either for violence or against it. So over the last 11 years being a vegan, I've heard a lot of justifications for why People just won't go vegan. And there's one simple reason why people just won't go. First of all, we've been pro ever since we were little children. We're born in a culture that forces, basically forces and programs us to consume animal foods. As time goes on, we continue eating these animal foods. We continue f feeling like, oh, it's natural, it's normal, it's necessary to be consuming animal products. And everyone's doing it, so I'm not going to question it. 
our culture doesn't uh, i mean we're not intelligent because intelligence is the ability to make connections and our culture doesn't and our teachers and the school system and the education system and uh, governments and the corporations don't tell us to question anything we just go along with it because everybody's doing it and ultimately yeah ultimately we just we're like dumbed down we're robots we're zombies and we are just basically repeating and doing the same things what everyone is doing we do the same things day in and day out and we just don't question anything and the whole idea about this culture that we live in is really to question question everything like everything and make up our own own minds you know feel into our hearts what is right and what is wrong we know it is wrong to kick a puppy we know it is wrong to steal from someone we know it is wrong to take babies away from their mothers we know it is wrong to inflict suffering on another but you know we do this almost every single day i mean maybe not kick puppies you know every single day but we you know steal from others steal their eggs steal their milk steal their honey and we wonder why there's so much theft around the world and why there's so much violence and suffering because we're causing suffering to other innocent beings and thus we are causing suffering in the end we suffer ourselves and we cause suffering to ourselves and so this is the core issue the core issue again is seeing other beings as property and as food and until we stop seeing non-human animals as property and food nothing will get better much uh, maybe very very little in time but we're never really going to solve the solve the main problems on this earth if we continue eating animals eating animal foods of any kind organic or not uh hunting or not all animals die horrible deaths if it's just a bullet to their throat or if it's a knife to their to their bullet to their head or a knife to their throat what have you all animals die and are dominated by human beings and i really do have faith i really do have faith and uh i am positive about the future the state of humanity and and i believe i really feel that humanity can awaken humanity can awaken because i'm uh optimistic optimist and i'm very optimistic for the future but all we can do ultimately is what we can do now to share the message of veganism let's not burn out so let's pace ourselves let's do as much work as we can but also give us time for relaxation and breaks so that we just don't burn out and i mean i've seen a lot a lot of ex vegans and animal rights activists that are ultimately that are burning out and really are not any more in the movement and some of them have even gone back to eating animal products and it's sad it's really sad so if anybody on the line would like to ask a question or have anything to say uh, i'm going to find out if there's a possibility if there's a way for somebody to come on as a live uh like for a live question and answer if you want you can uh i'll I'll eventually find out and we will do this but if you want to be a guest for an interview vegan or not if you want to challenge me on why it's so important to eat animal products and why it uh, saves the environment 
and how it uh, you know how it saves the human lives and how it uh, cures disease, cancer, heart disease. If you really truly believe that animal products cure cancer and cure diabetes and cures heart disease and all other diseases of affluence, if you believe animal agriculture is not responsible at all for deforestation, for environmental uh, devastations, come on to this program, Creating a Beautiful World, because I want to hear from you. I value everyone's thoughts and everyone can have their say right here on Creating a Beautiful World on vbnradio.com. I want everyone, farmers, ranchers, government uh, personnel, um, corporation, uh, CEOs, what have you. I want to uh, be challenged because I want to be like, uh, I don't even know that question. You know, like, you're right. Maybe it is okay to kill animals. Like, okay, maybe it is okay to steal from animals, steal their eggs and steal their honey and their milk. So I want to try, I want someone to challenge me, really, because I have not seen or heard of one good justification for continuing to see other beings, non-human animals, as property and as food. If you're still consuming animal products, there's immense suffering involved. If you're eating animal products of any kind, you are, unfortunately, we are harming animals if we are consuming animal products. And so if you want to send a message to me or a question, please do uh, email me at info at weareinterconnected.com. You can also email questions to vbnradio.com or um, just uh, search me on Facebook and uh, you can message me through Messenger or Facebook and I will definitely uh, get to your questions. And I answer, I try to answer all questions that I can. So, yes. Okay. Okay, everyone. So thank you again for joining us here on vbnradio.com. It's Creating a Beautiful World show. And it's the same title as one of my books that I'll be releasing this year. And so I'm still uh, finalizing a few little details and then I'll be releasing it probably mid um, this of this year. So again, just to reiterate, we have a show, a live show through YouTube starting tomorrow, six, I believe it's 6 um, a.m. Central Time. But I know it's uh, 9 p.m. Hong Kong time. So do check that out through my YouTube channel. So just search me. That's um, Michael Landfield, L-A-N-F-I-E-L-D. And you'll uh, see me there live. It's called Vegan World Prayer, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, the program. Also, sorry, the program. To, let's see. Yeah, the program tomorrow is actually at seven a.m. Let's see. Oh no, sorry. Hold on one second. Yes, it's at seven a.m. to seven thirty. Okay, so seven a.m. to seven thirty Central Time. So if you live Costa Rica or Saskatchewan, uh then 7 a.m. is your time. 9 p.m. Hong Kong time. And we're going to be praying for vegan world prayer with Supreme Master Ching Hai. Supreme Master Ching Hai is the one that created the Loving Hut vegan restaurants worldwide. She's also the f one that created um, Supreme Master TV. So that as well. 
So that's going to be a live event uh, tomorrow. That is Sunday, February 9. So check that out tomorrow. Yes. So I'll be uh, getting a new place, actually a bigger place. I'll be renting a place for the retreats. This is Peaceful Village. Let's talk a little bit about Peaceful Village. As I did not yet talk much about Peaceful Village. So what is Peaceful Village? Why did I start Peaceful Village? Well, I started Peaceful Village as a concept in 2014. And I was working at it part time here and there. Until one day I really just had this real drive in me to want to physically create the community. Now, um, I thought about what can I do in order to manifest my dream and make this a reality. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to rent a place and do Airbnb renting. So I did that for a little while, for a few weeks. And now we'll be actually doing a retreat. So I'm going to be doing monthly retreats in Costa Rica about basically how to be vegan in a non-vegan world. Everything about being vegan, staying vegan. There'll be cooking demonstrations. There will be... Um, information sessions so lectures there will be all sorts of great uh things happening within the schedule of a of three day and then there's going to be a seven day and eventually there will be a 21 day as well so i'm so excited for this to happen in april and next month uh, there will be more details through peaceful-village.com. So, yes, okay, so any questions anybody want to hit me up, you can also text me directly. So if you want to text me 819 8054258 if you have any questions or anything you'd like to ask or anything you have on your mind that you want to say please do text me it at that number so it's a canadian number 18198054258 okay i'm also on whatsapp as well so if anybody wants to hit me up there uh, I don't remember the number, but uh, if you go to peaceful-village.com in the contact section, you will find all the information there. So let's uh, go through Facebook a little bit, see what's going on today. Everybody. So a quote, some people want material things. Me, I just want peace, happy times and people who love me. Awesome. Thank you, Barbara Hunting, for sharing that. Let's see some more posts. Let's see, one second here. Put a big of hands. Okay, no. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, an article, study finds cows talk, share feelings and deserving of our compassion. So that's from onegreenplanet.org. Awesome. Thank you, One Green Planet, for sharing that with us. Yes, everybody. Incredible, incredible, incredible. A nice, another nice meme here on Facebook. Never be a prisoner of your past it was just a lesson not a life sentence anonymous so 
What's on your mind, everybody? Thank you for joining me. This is Creating a Beautiful World on vbnradio.com. And I thank Philip and everyone at VBN Radio for creating this amazing radio broadcast and for letting me be here, creating a beautiful world. And this is just a test, really. But we'll be here until 8 p.m. tonight, uh, Central Time. But we will have interviewers. We will have guests on, vegan or non-vegan. Come on, share with us your thoughts, any questions, anything you want to send me send me your best uh, justifications for consuming animal products or if you're vegan and you want to share the message with thousands or maybe even millions of people then you can definitely check uh, you can definitely contact me through my website we are interconnected.com uh, the email is info at we are interconnected.com and I love all of you who are listening and all the vegan advocates out there sharing this message to the world because it's so important that we get this message out. We don't know, to even some vegans don't know to the extent of the problem, the real problem that we're facing today. And it's, it's really bad. It's really, really horrific what's going on in this world. Um, firstly and foremost, what the an, uh, non-human animals are going through, the horrific conditions, it's a horror show beyond your wildest imagination. I mean, these animals are, I've, I've not only seen them through videos of what happens in farms and slaughterhouses, but I've seen them in person on the trucks deemed to slaughter and I've even witnessed them in slaughterhouses. I've been to slaughterhouses, not directly inside, but I've seen from the outside, I've seen inside what goes on and it is horrific, horrific. Wow, it's, uh, it's, it's incredible. And what is happening with uh, not only the animals, but what's happening with uh, the after effect of animal agriculture, which is basically a devastation on this planet of unimaginable proportions. We're destroying this earth and killing off so much naturally free roaming animals, wildlife, like never in the history of the world. We're killing off trillions of life, of animal life each year. We're cutting down acres. Actually, I don't even know how many acres it is now, but I've heard someone say it's up to four acres per second is lost due to animal agriculture and seeing animals as nothing but food and property. And as a result, humans are getting sick, not just sick physically, but sick mentally and spiritually. If we're ever going to live in harmony with all life, if we're ever going to live with peace, we need to stop eating animal products, animal foods of any kind. May it be the flesh of animals, may it be the dairy, the eggs, the honey, animal clothing, using animals for anything, and even turning 
our view around about the non-human animals, pets that we keep at home. We need to have a different view because what we're doing is not solving anything. We are literally enslaving animals and they have a right to live free lives without human interference and domination. I talk about the pet situation in my books, Return to the Gentle Sea for the Love That Lives in Everyone. So you can read that. And by the way, this radio station, yeah, this radio station is running up and running. It's free. So it would be appreciated if, if anyone wants to chip in a little bit, send a message to... Uh, to the people, uh, send a contact information to vbnradio.com because they work tirelessly to make this radio show available to the world. So I thank them so much um, for creating this incredible radio program. This is This is uh, Creating a Beautiful World. I'm Michael Landfield, and you can visit my website at weareinterconnected.com. Just how it's pronounced, weareinterconnected.com. And do visit uh, vbmradio.com for more uh, scheduling and information. And if you like to be a host, if you're vegan and you like to be a host on VBN Radio, do... Wow, first time I heard uh, Siren go off. But if you want to be a host on VBN Radio, sharing the vegan message with others, please do get in contact with them. VBNradio.com And I'm sorry for if there's any noise in the background. Uh, but once I get official place, hopefully there will be no, no noise. I'm in a semi soundproof room so and i have my um focus right scarlet studio mic and interface here so i am really broadcasting professionally through a very minimal setup so it's a focus right uh scarlet solo uh package with a scarlet studio microphone and um yeah it's a very good setup that I have here. And uh, unfortunately, sometimes there is noise and sometimes, unfortunately, that's, that's just how it is. So hope you guys are enjoying this radio broadcast. And it's going on till 8 p.m. tonight. Thank you for joining me here. Thank you to Philip Steck and Louise for creating this broadcast. Check them out. Learn more about their radio program at vbnradio.com. This is VBN Radio. And I'm your host, Michael Anfield, on Creating a Beautiful World, the same title as my book. Don't forget to visit peaceful-village.com to learn more about what I'm doing there at what I'm doing, I should say, what I'm doing at Peaceful Village, Vegan Intentional Community. We're on ic.org, so um, Intentional Communities website, uh, Fellowship for, it's called Fellowship, Intention, Fellowship for Intentional Communities, I believe. But the website is ic.org, so we're on there. It's going to be updated within the next uh, little while once we get our retreats and the new place as well. So the new place we're going to be getting is uh, much cheaper, it's bigger as well. And it's going to be it's going to be incredible. So I'm looking for a few places right now uh, for the official peaceful village, and um, I'm not sure if I'm going to be. Um, we'll see what happens within the next uh, month or so, but uh, keep your fingers crossed. If anybody wants to donate to peaceful village, you can definitely do so. Peaceful-village.com or peaceful-village. 
www.ethereumcoin.com. Okay, also don't forget that my books, The Interconnectedness of Life, The Journey, The Lost Love, Return to the Gentle Sea for the Love That Lives in Everyone, are all available through Amazon. They're all available through my website, weareinterconnected.com. The Lost Love, Return to the Gentle Sea for the Love That Lives in Everyone, are also available as audiobooks, so you can get that free on YouTube, because I'm offering them free because I really want to get this message out to the world. You know, I really, just like everyone else, we all want to live in the Garden of Eden. So let's strive to get there. If we preach love and compassion, let's do so for all the beings of this earth. And so, any questions, anybody? Send me a message through Facebook or email info at weareinterconnected.com. So the program that I'll be live on, which will actually be broadcasting to between 30 and 50,000 listeners, is created by UI Media Network and they have affiliations with huge conglomerate corporations. So they want to hear, they want to talk to me about, you know, factory farming and they want to talk to me about animal agriculture and all this stuff and veganism. So that's going to be great. That's going to be happening February the 20th. So let me just check one second here. So February the 20th, that's uh, about two weeks here, two weeks from now. And I'm going to know more information. I'm going to have the links and everything posted on weareinterconnected.com. So don't forget to check that out. Um, at least a few days before the show, uh, show is airing, I'll post the links down below. I'm still waiting for them to connect with me. So this is UI Media Network. And the radio show, let's see here, one second. Uh, okay, so let me open up the, f okay, so it's called, one second here. It's called Awaken Atlanta, Awaken Stars. And it's created by UI Media Network, Raising the Frequency. And this is happening live through the internet. And it's going to start uh, 6.30 a.m. to 7 a.m. So half an hour show, Thursday, February 20th, 2020. So this is happening 6.30. And I believe, yeah, this is, this is a central time. So central standard time. In Guatemala, Costa Rica, Saskatchewan, and it will be broadcasting in the US. All I'm not sure if it's all over the world or if it's, uh, but it's going to definitely be broadcasting to about 30 to 50,000 people. So there's going to be 30, at least 30,000 listeners. It's going to be amazing, half an hour with, of course, some commercial breaks and introduction and so forth. And so I'm going to give at least a 15-minute segment, 15, 20-minute segment, speaking about veganism and why it's so important for people to become vegan and to stop seeing non-human animals as property and as food. And I'm so excited. This is like my, one of my dreams is really to share the message with a with the masses of people and now it's going to become reality and so i thank you all of you who made this possible i thank ui media network for having me on the show it's going to be amazing so it's going to happen in about two weeks you're going to you can find more information coming soon on weareinterconnected.com Okay, everybody, so 
we are in about an hour into the show and just a few other things to talk about before we actually get on to what's happening in the world today the problems that we're facing and like why is why they're happening and what we can do to what we can do to be be the solution so let's see everybody what's in the news on facebook because literally i don't listen to mass media news i don't listen to news on tv or the radio because it's all fear-based it's all programming that big corporations and governments want us to listen to so my news comes from facebook and yeah there are a lot of you know lies and there are a lot of uh, truth that we have to disseminate and we have to filter through so let's see what it's all about i want to say a uh, shout out to my mom thank you so much she said very proud of you i said thank you very much i love you so much and as they say on the car automotive commercials hi mom <laughs> okay so i just had to say that it's 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 incredible so i'm here in costa rica i've been here for some four months now and i just love it in central america i'm having a hard time learning the language i guess i'm a slow learner in, in certain cases but i love it here Oh my goodness, there's a post here. Cranberry walnut chickpea salad sandwich. See, there's no excuse to continue eating animal products. I mean, look at this. Amazing. I mean, if you could see this, you would be salivating right now. Like, amazing. And just to let you know, I want to sing and say this. I want to say a shout out to my good friend, Lena Novak. Lena Novak from Toronto, Canada. She's living right now in Mississauga, actually. And sending a shout out to her, she's recreating her website. And it's going to take a little bit of time, but she is uh, the founder of Lena's Vegan Living. She has amazing recipes. I tell you, amazing recipes. And she's even working on her book. She's working on a blog. She's working on her book right now, which should be out in the, future, in the near future. But uh, saying, saying a shout out to Lena's Vegan Living. Okay, so what else is there on Facebook? Okay, uh, one thing I just want to say, and this is not uh, sponsored by any means, but if anybody wants to find out about vegan restaurants in their area, if you want to go to a vegan restaurant, if you want to support vegans and vegan businesses, check out uh, happycow.net. That's happycow.net. And yeah. That's happy cow. I love happy cow. The only thing I don't really enjoy is the vegetarian, uh, the vegetarian restaurants and the ones that have vegan options. But unfortunately, in our world, there are still locations that are very remote that don't have vegan restaurants. And if you have, if they're transitioning, or if they're adding more and more vegan options, thank you for that. And hopefully, you'll be vegan soon uh yeah i see so many good things here for example beautiful girl with a cow on an image like reading to the baby calf a little girl beautiful 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 uh thank you philip again for plugging in this radio program and creating this uh vbnradio.com which is uh VBN stands for Vegan Broadcasting Network. Yes, everybody. Again, avocado grilled cauliflower sandwich. Man, you got to check out the hardysoul.com for this amazing sandwich that will, that will make you forget grilled cheese avocado grilled cauliflower sandwich it's so incredible the picture is just like 
well, I want to go there and eat it. Even though currently I am eating mostly fruit in my diet, um, because I'm not fully self-sustainable yet, and um, my limited budget, I am eating mostly mostly fruit. And my aim really is to strive to be Eden fruitarian. If you want to know more about Eden fruitarianism, visit fruitnut.net. I send a shout out to my good friend and mentor, Mango Wadzak, who coined the term Eden fruitarianism. His website is fruitnut.net. And he wrote several books, including a vegan publisher's published book called Destination Eden and the Eden Fruitarian Guidebook. So you can check him out there. Whoa, a post. You should go naked more often. It's good for you. Yes, yes. That's how we came into this world. We were born like that. And as uh, and I truly believe a lot of what I read in the Bible of uh, the Garden of Eden and how yeah Adam and Eve were naked as soon as uh, we sinned we covered ourselves up let's see what else is there today on Facebook my news outlet So Burton Hill said, happiness is not a destination. It is a method of life. So again, the quotes that I am saying here, I am not fully endorsing everything from the authors. Just let you know. Whoa. My friend uh, Patni Rahu, Raju, he said, we are all connected in consciousness. Yes, we are. We're all connected in consciousness. And here, uh, this is a funny post that my uncle just posted recently. Uh, and now I, I was talking about uh, being naked. Here he says, uh, friends, I love Greek mythology, scriptures, history. Just yesterday I bought my wife renting a statue of Olympian. I like him so much that when it's cold, I cover it. Judge it yourself that I have a good heart. So even the statues are naked. So that's the way we came and that's the way we should end up. So thank you all for having these amazing posts. I just love them dearly. So IKEA now has a hydroponic system, allows you to grow vegetables all year round. Wow, that is on Healthy Food House. So there's a, let me, let me read you that. So it's from healthyfoodhouse.com. And IKEA has a system for creating health, growing healthy vegetables. Amazing. Can you believe it? So let me read you this. It's posted last year, October 26, 2019. So if you do not have the garden, garden place to grow your own food, IKEA's indoor hydroponic garden is the solution you need. Uh, just a side note here that uh, I'm not sure if it's uh, available at all IKEA locations, but let's see what it says. It allows anyone to grow fresh produce at home without the need for soil or any previous gardening experience. It shows that a successful growth of plants requires adequate light and water only, and it is reported that this method can help grow help you grow many of the veggies widely available today. The IKEA system contains absorbent foam plugs that enables the seeds to sprout and keep the seeds moist 
without overwatering them. As soon as the sea germinates, the foam plus should be transferred into, into its own separate small pot and filled with pumice stones, which can retain a lot of water. Then the pots can be transferred to a growing tray equipped with a solar lamp. The efficient system can be, can be successful in rooms without any sunlight as well, but it would be the best to place it on a windowsill that gets a lot of sun. Moreover, the built-in water sensor ensures the plants are given the ideal amount of water. As Helena Karlen from Swedish University of Agriculture Sciences explains the challenge, quotes, the challenge was to make growing plants in a hydroponic system simple so that anyone can, could succeed. Named in the Kaida Vaxer series, the design resulted from a collaboration of agriculture scientists in Sweden, and it was aimed to be used by people who live in apartments or don't have a garden, as well as those who want, to com who want completely fresh produce even during the winter. Ronnie Runnison, product developer at IKEA, said, quote, we wanted to create gardening kits that would simplify for people to grow their own herbs and vegetables 12 months a year. Whether you live in the northern parts of Sweden or in the winter time, or if you live in China or North America, you should be able to succeed with your garden. It's about creating a more sustainable and healthier life at home for everyone. The basic Vaxer series includes everything you need to get started. Seed, starter, plugs, nursery box, cultivation, insert set, fertilizer, pumice stones, cultivation light fixture, and cultivation light. Okay. Oh, the fixture and the light. Okay. Uh, just one side note here that the seeds might be GMO, might be non-organic. Uh, we don't know what's in the fertilizer. So that's another thing. So remember, veganic gardening, veganic farming is the best farming possible because it doesn't exploit animals, doesn't use animal inputs like manure, animal manure, animal blood meal, bone meal, fish meal, feather meal, etc. It doesn't use animals, domesticated animals on the land, and it uses a veganic permaculture technique techniques. So basically, you can use... Uh, uh, vegan or fruitarian humanure, you can use compost, plant compost, all this stuff. And so learn about that. Uh, there's a book called, uh, even though it's not a vegan humanure book, it's called Humanure Handbook, which is a great book that I highly recommend, as well as um, learn through YouTube and other sources about composting. So, going back to this article, the system is more affordable than other kind, other of its kind and is great for people with minimal space. Moreover, it follows the IKEA's eco-friendly trend towards sustainability. It is also a departure from IKEA's usual catalog, catalog of items like bookshelves and tables and stays away from the traditional retail business model. IKEA's head of sustainability famously proclaimed that the Western world had hit, um, quote, peak home furnishings and declared that they are helping customers to live more eco-friendly lives. Wow. Yeah, you can grow like food basically anywhere. Uh, there's so many techniques and growing methods. It's incredible. Uh, you can learn a little bit more about this. Uh, there's a thing called or um, technology called uh, earthships earthships is one technology and there's also another method which I can't recall right now the name of it but uh, yeah there's many many different techniques and methods out there for growing food so if you have the time, 
your energy and everybody does have the time and energy and a little bit of money start growing your own food because it's much cheaper um, in the long run I mean it may be more expensive in the beginning it may take some more time in the beginning but if you garden and farm veganically it's definitely going to be a huge plus plus for everyone and teach others about gardening and farming because we don't there's not enough fruit trees out there so grow as much food as you possibly can share it around with others your neighbors and friends and family so ah oh my goodness there's a picture of jackfruit here it's so delicious jackfruit but in costa rica you can't really get good jackfruit i haven't really tasted good jackfruit and so jackfruit durian durian i have tasted durian but they're pretty expensive and it's still hard to come by in costa rica so let's see okay there's uh keys to life this is the post i'm just gonna edit some of this because some of it may not uh may not be relevant to this radio show but uh love one another never hate give generously live simply forgive quickly be kind always that's it and when we say love one another it means love everyone all life which means we stop consuming animal products we stop seeing animals as property I can't uh, not reinforce that anymore. I got to keep drilling that in because people don't understand that people think it's just the meat that we eat and it's not just the meat. And meat in the Bible, for any of you that follow the Bible, meat means food or nourishment and does not mean the flesh of animals. So we kind of twisted the meanings of things. So another great post that I shared recently there's a quote I don't know who said it but uh, anonymous quote we cannot force someone to hear a message they are not ready to receive but we must never underestimate the power of planting a seed that's very true I've always planted seeds within people's loving kind compassionate seeds as much as I possibly can sharing veganism with others so again as a vegan we can never force our message to others we can only share our own story so one thing that i've learned and i'm gonna going to um try and grasp to a story here and one thing that I've learned over the years of uh, being a vegan is that what we need to do as vegan advocates is to plant seeds of love and let that seed do its job. If we have a chance to plant additional seeds, yes, we can. Or to water that seed, we can. If it's with, pertaining to our family or close friends or somebody we know, that we see frequently we can at times educate them about veganism and so the best idea that I've learned is really to share veganism through let's see here share veganism by telling our own story in the I statement so we can say i went vegan in 2009 because i ultimately did not want to use and harm animals or get anyone to do it on my behalf and i vowed never again to see other beings see non-human animals as property and as things to be used and so i vowed eventually i found out that i was a vegan and i vowed also to share the message of compassion for all life a vegan message 
a vegan life, a vegan way of living. And so I have in my new book, Creating a Beautiful World, which will be out again this year, probably summer uh, this year. A uh, few examples of how we can share the message and actual examples of me speaking to others and how you can speak to others. Might it be at an event or with your family or online through your YouTube channel. So we all need to share this. Let's talk a little bit about the devastating aftermath of animal agriculture and what we can do to be a force for healing on this planet. Okay. It is so important that we understand what's happening in the world today. If you don't know what's happening in the world today, pertaining to the fires and, and environmental devastations that is wreaking our world, wreaking havoc on our world and ourselves and the non-human animals, then your head, I feel your head is in the, in the sand or on your, been living maybe under a rock or in a cave and you don't have access to internet. Maybe you don't uh, watch mass media news on television or through the, you know, the newspapers or radio or so forth, forth. but you definitely know that there's a lot of you know, problems that we're facing as humanity throughout the world. Uh, a lot of it uh, may be fabricated or a lot, a lot of it may be lies. But in any case, we know that there are far too many problems that we're facing as humanity on this, on this earth. So the earth can only do so much. Mother Earth is lashing out with all sorts of environmental disasters and such as hurricanes and tornadoes and tsunamis and you name it, forest fires, droughts. And we're accelerating, humans are accelerating that. We're causing more pollution and more problems environmentally than ever before in the last, supposedly, last 65 million years. We are causing so much devastation globally through, and I don't even know, and I question everything, I don't even know if we live on a globe, but that's, that's another thing just to let people know is to question everything. Understanding that corporations and governments are not here for our well-being, or at least for the majority of time, are not here for our well-being. Even though there is some things, there are some things that the government does do. I mean, they do some good work. Some corporations do do good work, but in the big scheme of things, yeah, we need to expose these uh, their lies and expose uh, the truth. Talk about the truth as much as we possibly can. And truth comes from within. Not from external materialistic things. So we're killing off so much life. Precious life. Billions, if not tens of billions, every single day. Not only that... We are, as a result, we're causing so much devastation to humans, to ourselves, through starvation. I mean, a billion people going hungry each and every day, or I should say a billion people are going hungry today. Um, slavery, human slavery is happening on a bigger scale, wider scale than ever before in human history. I'm not going to uh, mention the statistics because I can never remember them, but uh, a lot of them anyways, but it's happening bit, like f wider than we have ever imagined it in human history. Um, 
our economic issues we are, we're facing throughout the world, throughout the world, our um, yeah economic issues and countries are going bankrupt, while they print like literally billions or trillions of, of new currency and new money. Problems with uh, healthcare and with uh, problems with our human health. So diabetes is skyrocketing, heart disease, cancers, osteoporosis, you name it, all the diseases of affluence. More and more people are getting sick. More people are getting overweight and obese are becoming overweight and obese because of one thing, hurting culture, seeing non-human animals as property, seeing them as food, eating animal foods, eating meat, dairy, and eggs, eating the honey from confined bees, seeing everybody and everything as property, just continuing to mass slaughter everything and everyone. I mean, we'll, we'll, whatever gets in our way, we'll kill. Like, we are incredible species. We will kill and destroy everything and everyone. We'll even kill ourselves. And we consider ourselves to be intelligent and wise and compassionate and loving. And we want to live in a peaceful world. We want to live in harmony with all life. Forget it. It's not going to happen if we continue eating animal products, continue seeing our animals as property. We gotta stop this. We gotta really awaken the innate love and compassion from within us. Yes, we're all born compassionate and loving as small infants. And as time goes on, we're programmed through our culture to believe otherwise, to see other beings as property, to see other human beings as different from us, and to separate everything and uh and just to separate, we live, I mean, we live in a separatistical world. We live in a materialistic, separatistical world. And we are taught that uh, others are others and they're not really like, uh, like us at all. And we're taught that, uh, you know, we're yellow and white and black and red and what other colors there are out there. But we're all the same. We all bleed. We all feel. We all think. We all give birth or at least women, the females give birth. We all have families and we all love, including non-human animals, including the pigs, chickens, cows, fish, deer, all the other animals, maybe snakes, spiders, cockroaches, all the other animals. We need to take care of one another and really be here for one another and live in harmony with all life. I really highly recommend uh, people, if people want to learn more, if you're not vegan yet, pre-vegan, you want to learn more about why it's so important to become vegan. I mean, just look around you, what's happening. Veganism means love, love for all life. It was coined in uh, 1944 by Donald Watson, basically to, uh, it was basically for kindness and compassion for the animals and uh, eventually after that he with along with a few others created the vegan society and it's become a movement it's become a way of living it's really our natural way of living our innate way of living that's what veganism is I also talk about Eden fruitarianism in my latest book creating a beautiful world and that is why I, I titled this uh, radio show Creating a Beautiful World because it's very positive. That's what we want to do. We want to create a beautiful world. We do live in a beautiful world. But let's, instead of destroying this earth, let's create it. Let's maintain it. Let's maintain or create this beautiful, amazing and sustain and thrive on this amazing earth that we all live on. If anybody has anything they want to add, again, you can always email the questions to me, info at 
weareinterconnected.com or just go to weareinterconnected.com and of course get my books online they're available through amazon barnes and nobles and virtually worldwide everywhere so you can get them just about anywhere and if you can't please do try to make them available i am also calling on anyone who can translate my books to other languages because it needs to this message really needs to get out to the to the masses of people Let's work on getting the vegan way of living out to the world. We really need to focus on positivity, on a loving message. Doesn't matter what people think about us, what they think about what we say, what they say to us, or what we think about ourselves. The animals are dying, the non-human animals. The earth is being destroyed. We have no time. The tipping point is literally yesterday. And this means that we have to do whatever we can in a non-violent and peaceful, loving way. Not to judge, shame, blame, or anything like that, but to plant seeds of love within people. That's what we must do. 7.30 p.m. Central Time, Costa Rica. I'm here in San Antonio de Escazú, and uh, that's about 20 kilometers from, 20 kilometers east of San Jose, the capital of Costa Rica. Baby, I'm loving it here. And it's just so beautiful. I mean, when you see the trees and you see the leaves and just a blade of grass, you can really deeply connect to the bird that's out there or the dog that's chained up, really deeply connect to them. There's a lot of beauty, but also a lot of sadness pertaining to the non-human animals and also the human animals that are enslaved, caged or enslaved and that are used and tortured against their will. And it's very sad. It's very heartbreaking, but it's also very beautiful to be able to connect and to empathize with them. I remember when I first started bearing witness with Toronto Pig Save with Save Movement at the time it was called uh, the Save Movement now it's called Animal Save Movement and I'm very thankful to Anita Kreins who co-founded with her dog co-founded Toronto Pig Save and the Save Movement I'm so thankful for everyone who has organized or helped in any way because uh, if I if they they hadn't done it then I wouldn't be able, then I wouldn't have bear bore witness to the suffering that animals go through in these trucks to slaughter and it's so important for me anyways because I it, it connected me more to these animals and it reminded me that okay that one animal that I I mean I saw thousands maybe hundreds or maybe even thousands of animals trucked off to slaughter in these death death trucks but it was this one animal in particular that I connected with and that really hit me really hard I remember one time standing on a boulevard in between a intersection and we were literally just bearing witness to these animals so looking inside these trucks uh, some people were taking photos and videos of these animals so they can expose what's going on on the internet and uh, some of them were giving water or even food to them and I remember connecting to this one animal 
even though I had done many of these vigils before. But ultimately, I connected to this one animal. And I, as I looked into her, I saw myself in that being. I saw a friend. I saw his or her soul. And the animal asked me a question. Why are you doing this to us? I backed away from the truck, tearing, crying. And in my mind, I answered, I don't know. For the first 26 years of my life, I supported the use, abuse, and killing of animals. Indirectly or directly, I also abused animals. At that moment, I vowed for my entire life to do what I could to share this message, message with others. Not only is it so important for me to stay vegan, to what we call a cause or lifestyle, or some people call a diet or what have you, but this life I live, I wanna live as a compassionate living being. Not only that, I want to know that not only am I stopping my support of anything that causes harm to any living being or living entity, also to share the message with others. Because I think it's so important that we not only are vegan, but we share veganism with other people. I mean, if we don't share veganism with other people, then how are others going to know? How are we going to live in the Garden of Eden? So we really don't know how or when we're going to live in a vegan paradise. And I don't even know how it's going to be, how it's going to look, how it's going to be, how we're going to live, what's going to happen, when it's going to happen. We don't know. All we can do is do what we can in this life time that we're living right here in this plane. All we can do is share this message with others and to cause the least harm that we possibly can. It is, again, so vital. I hear the screams in my mind. I hear the animals pleading with us. I see Mother Earth whipping up all kinds of environmental devastations. I see the after effects of animal agriculture. We need to stop. We are not barbarians. We're not cavemen or cave women any longer. We need to be forces for the healing on our Earth. It's not about excuses any longer. It's not about people who make fun of you or, or about uh, your voice shaking or, or, or what people think of you or whatever. It's really about one thing. And all the masters, the spiritual masters of our time, yesterday and today, have told us one thing, one thing. The purpose on life, in life, is to love. Now, not all of them were vegans, and because the word was recently coined in 1944, so we don't really know if all of them were actually vegans, but we do know that they did preach love, and now that love must include all living beings, 
and living units. Everyone. All of us. So please do join us tomorrow, 7 a.m. for the Vegan World Prayer. It's, uh, it's organized by Supreme Master Ching Hai. So Supreme Master Ching Hai is an incredible person. Incredible being who need not an introduction. Just like Will Tuttle, Mango Wodzak, and all the tireless vegan and animal advocates. It, I salute, applaud you, thank you, congratulate you. I'm here to hug and to kiss you for all the good work that you're doing. Everyone who made this day possible for myself and who are doing your part to share the vegan message to the world, thank you so much. It means so much to not just to me, because I'm like so grateful to everyone that's like sharing this message, but to all the beings who are being enslaved or who will be enslaved or who are suffering at this moment. And literally there's, including uh, the aquatic animals and including insects, probably hundreds of billions are suffering uh, right now. And so we can't imagine the extent of the problem. Even I can't really imagine the extent, the horrific uh, devastation that's happening in the world today, not just environmentally, but um, pertaining to uh, the animals in these uh, farms and slaughterhouses and to us, because we are so severely wounded in our society and we need to reawaken that love within, uh, within ourselves. Seriously, reawaken the love within ourselves. And so, yes, again, I want to send a thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for really doing your part to be a force for healing on this earth. Whoever is listening or will listen to this broadcast at any time, I want to send my love to you and to all your family, friends, everyone who is affected by the after effects of uh, animal agriculture, who's affected uh, through health uh, implications and uh, health crises, as well as environmental devastation, devastations, um, and so forth. And so I really, my heart goes out to you. So, okay, everybody, thank you for joining me. We're going to do a little meditation here. So we're going to be silent for a little bit right here. It's a, like a prayer. So basically, we're going to go into sil uh, like, a like a silent meditation. So let's uh, meditate uh, for the next few moments here for, let's say, two minutes, uh, two, three minutes. We're going to meditate, uh, pray for the non-human animals, the billions, maybe even trillions of animals that are killed and are enslaved. Let's uh, pray for all the human animals that are um, enslaved and that are also killed and they're also suffering in some way. So let's pray for everyone today. Let's pray for the earth to, re to heal and rejuvenate and to become what she is meant to be, and that's the lungs of the earth. So let's meditate and be in silence for the next two, three minutes.
Okay, everyone, and thank you for joining me back here after that couple minutes silence prayer or meditation. And I want to again thank all of you for joining me here today, vbnradio.com. They need all the help they can get. So if you want to be a host on VBN Radio, please do send them a message through their website, VBN, uh, vbnradio.com. Vegan Broadcasting Network. Thank you for joining me here on Creating a Beautiful World. This is Michael Landfield. And let's see what other news there is today in the world. Uh, let's see. Yes, everybody. Let's see what else is there in the news. Really, there's only like pictures. Um, uh, Joaquin Phoenix seems to be in the media a lot. And he's uh, really speaking out against uh, the mass cruelty and slaughter that's happening around the world. He's a big supporter of the Animal Liberation Front, and he does, uh, he attends these protests and vigils and bearing witness. So thank you, Walking Phoenix, for doing what you're doing to share veganism with others. So thank you so much, and thank you to everyone else for sharing veganism with others. I can't thank you enough. I need to thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Wow. Uh, I want to send a shout out to all my good friends on Facebook. My lovely, lovely friends, I see right here a video that is a blender full of bananas, like, whoo! I love you, Victoria Everett St. John, for posting this video, giving me inspiration, uh, juice and bananas and mangoes. Wow, this is amazing. Okay. It's incredible, incredible, incredible. Eat your fruits and vegetables. They're healthier for you. They're healthiest for you. And you'll have so much energy. You'll want to jump out of your, spring out of your bed in the morning and have so much energy throughout the day. Wow, 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 wow. I feel like so much better as a vegan because uh, before I was vegan, I don't think I was even living. I think I was more or less uh, in a dream. And now I really feel like I'm living. So it's really a blessing to be alive on this earth. And as a YouTuber says, Ralph Smart. It's good to be alive, baby. So, yeah. It's good to be alive, baby. Yes, it's good to be alive. Thank you, thank you so much, everybody, for being here. And sorry for the, for the peak here. I'm very, very sorry for the peak. But thank you all for being here. Oh, there's a beautiful video uh, with the girl with the pig, a pet. I don't know if he's, he or she's a pet, but a pig and brushing the pig's fur. Very, very beautiful. So let's be kind and compassionate to all living beings. All living beings.
So, what other information are there? What other things are there? I have a lot of, uh, on my Facebook, I have a lot of posts that are spiritual memes, ethical memes, like um, this one here, which I'm not sure where, who wrote it. But when the right person hugs you, it's like medicine. I'm so grateful for those few people in my life who are good for my soul. So amazing. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So, okay, so here I'm looking at a post pertaining to Beyond Meat Burgers. So I want to talk about Beyond Meat Burgers and my thoughts about these uh, analog or fake meats. Now, they're not fake meats actually they call them analogs or i i should i like to call them plant meat because that's what they are really they're they're plants it's like a imitation meat basically and my um feeling about these and i don't eat them any longer is that they are good for people that are transitioning for the first few years to veganism but when we become long-term vegans let's say after five years we should stop eating these things these are not healthy uh, yes you can probably find ones that are whole food but majority of the plant-based meats in supermarkets and in restaurants may not be fully 100% vegan. So some of them may include, as I mentioned in one or two of my videos on YouTube, um, some of them may include egg or milk ingredients, dairy ingredients. So you have to understand that. Another thing is when you're buying from these non-vegan restaurants, you're supporting animal agriculture, supporting the meat restaurants, even if you're buying the plant-based or vegan options. Another thing is the bun might not be vegan. The sauce may not be vegan, whatever they add on to it, the, the, their specialty sauce. And uh, they may add also cheese. Now, of course, you can find out what the ingredients are in the, in the, in the, in the bun or what the what the um, ingredients is of the actual burger, even if it says plant-based or if it says vegan, how do we really know it is? So that's something that we have to do our research on. Another thing is why support these places when we can support fully vegan restaurants? So support fully vegan restaurants whenever you can. We support vegans, we support uh, vegan-oriented ori businesses, and uh, they can offer more and more products and services, as well as even franchise their business, you know, create more locations, because that's what we need. We need literally millions upon millions upon millions of these products and these restaurants. Let's make it a reality. Another thing is that even if it, they claim it to be 100% vegan, like I've seen one ad said 100% vegan. It was a KFC in, I believe, Germany. And even if it's 100% vegan, like they claim, it's not made in a facility that's 100% vegan. And so it might, they might contaminate it in some way, might come into uh, cross-contamination, and we don't really know. So we might be eating a little bit of cheese, we might be eating a little bit of sauce, whatever. We don't really know what we're eating. So that's the thing when we're buying from these places. We really don't know. So again, let's support vegan restaurants and vegan businesses whenever we can. And buy from vegan companies whenever we can. I know there are non-vegan companies that are buying out certain brands of vegan brands are buying out they're purchasing them 
and uh, no longer is certain companies, uh, vegan companies, fully vegan because the parent company may not be vegan. So the parent company may be testing on animals. So do the best that we can. But in time, after many years, we should strive to not consume these products any longer. If we want, we should make our own products. So that's something that we should learn to do is make our own almond milk or soy milk, make our own uh, bean burgers or rice burgers, make our own um, food at home. I mean, it's much more healthier. And in fact, it's actually healthier to even eat raw because it hasn't been heated in any way. You're just basically taking it from the tree or the bush or from nature. You're taking the plant and you're eating the plant, maybe a fruit or vegetable, you're eating it in its natural raw state, uncooked. That is the best way possible to be consuming our food. Though, of course, the second best way is to steam our food, lightly steam it. What's happening on Facebook? Incredible things happening on Facebook. I can't believe it. Hey, wow, three minutes left in the broadcast, everybody. And I just want to say thank you so much for people joining me here. Uh, it's been a wonderful show. I've tried my best to cover the two hours. But uh, for each show that I host, I want to try and bring people on as guests for interviews. Please, if you're vegan or non-vegan, pre-vegan, you want to be on my show, please do email me. Contact me at info at weareinterconnected.com. Of course, please do respect the show, my show, uh, vbnradio.com. Um, and so, of course, this is a live broadcast and it's broadcasting to the world through vbnradio.com. And uh, I'll see you next uh, two weeks. I will giving you the schedule and the times, but basically the next event will partake February 22nd. So Saturday, February 22nd, again at 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Central Time, Central Standard Time. So February 22nd, 2020, Saturday, 6 p.m. So in the evening time, Central Time. So that would be 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and I'm not sure what the GMT time is, but uh, it's 6 p.m. East, um, Central Time. So check us out. Uh, we have two minutes left in the broadcasting, and I just want to say thank you so much for joining me here. If you want to learn more about Peaceful Village and myself and uh, get my books, visit peaceful-village.com or peaceful-village.com. Um, and uh, we are interconnected.com. That's really about it, everyone. I want to send you a big thank you and a big hug and kiss for being here and uh, staying with me and bearing with me while we test out. This is the test live version. I'm so happy to be here. I love you all. And uh, this is Creating a Beautiful World with Michael Landfield, the host, Michael Landfield, on vbnradio.com. And Sending you a bye-bye and see you later. Until next time, arrivederci and au revoir and uh, buenas noches. Bye-bye, everyone.